Hi, I'm Jamie with Saving Secret, where I help you become more intentional with your money. Today, I want to talk about the Every Dollar app. The Every Dollar budgeting system is my favorite budgeting tool. I've used the Every Dollar budgeting app for over three and a half years, and I absolutely love it. There's a lot of great things. It's a free tool and it's good for all of those nerd finance people but it's also good for the free spirits uh, a little bit of background on myself i've used the budgeting app for about three and a half years when i came across dave ramsey and i'm currently on baby step number six so even if you're not part of the dave ramsey community it's really a wonderful app to help you budget and so today I'm going to give you some of my tips and tricks on how to set up your budget step by step. I'm going to show you specifically how to do it with the cash based system only, just using a debit card and just using cash. Um, and then if you wait to the end of the video, I'm going to talk through how to set up a budget uh, using a credit card. So. For all of those Dave Ramsey fans out there who, who are very against using a credit card, I did want to show uh, how to set up a budget using a credit card and how you can manage that. So if you like the information at any point in the video, please be sure to hit, this, hit the like button. If, uh, if you like this video and you're interested in how to be more intentional with your money, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. So before we get started, uh, you can find a link to the Every Dollar budget uh, by clicking on the link in the description, the description below. Uh, that'll be brought up to it. Uh, so let's get started. Once you click on the link, you'll be brought here. You're gonna click on sign in. You don't have one you're going to create one you're going to give them some information then they're going to ask for you verify your email address all right so now they're going to say your email has been verified and they're going to take this so take me to my budget all right so when you first get it let's start setting up a budget it's going to ask you for a specific month i'm going to start fresh with this may one so if you're going to look at this one, it's actually going to ask for your income. So if you look over here, they have different categories that are pretty important that you look at. I really think there are a few too many over here, so I'm going to simplify it. These are important, important ones that you want to have, but I could actually delete different groups. And I'll show you why I'm deleting some of these in a little bit, but really I'm going to just organize the main category groups, which I think are important. All right, now that you have the categories that you want, now you're gonna start putting in the individual items under each category. So there's really just six categories that I care about, and I can fit any items that I want in here. So these are gonna be expenses, things that you can plan for, and things that you want. The reason I like to start with food is it's definitely a necessity, and it's really easy and difficult to plan for. So what you have is you wanna put in what you're planning for. You just put it in right here under the planned portion. So under lifestyle, things that I put under my lifestyle budget, I want to make sure that I keep it simple, that I can manage it. I really have at least three funds. Um, you can call them whatever you want, but I have a family funds. And family funds can mean all kinds of things. But for me, it could mean going out to dinner. It could mean clothing. It could mean date night with my wife. These are things that are, we have kind of a set amount that we're going to budget for, but we really don't know exactly ahead of time what they're going to be. Then I have a, I have a Jamie fund. I'll put a dollar amount there for my personal expenses. My wife has a personal account, personal fund that she's able to spend whatever she wants on, no questions asked. We put it into the budget. 
And then the last item is things that are coming up for that ma month, whether they're in May. So in May, there's Mother's Day. So we put in a budget for Mother's Day, what you may need to budget for, because we know that's coming up in May. The next thing is transportation. Gas is really going to depend on how much driving you're doing, what you need for giving. You want to you put in the appropriate amounts for that. Then when we come into your mortgage, this is one that I'm really passionate about. This is the step I'm currently on and paying off, working towards paying off my home. For me, uh, in my budget, luckily where I live, it's just utilities. But of course I have internet. I don't have trash, but I do have the bill that everybody needs right now. I do have my Netflix because I also have, I've got a couple of young kids, so you gotta have good old Disney Plus. All right, so we're, we're going through it. Insurance, next month insurance, I have life insurance that's due. I pay it yearly. So here's my life insurance payment. So now that you have these main categories figured out, now you can go through it and write your subcategories. And for some items, they may have a due date or they may not. So for example, groceries, you don't really have a due date for when they're due, but you have a, a fund that you have available. These are also funds. They're not really a due date of when you need to have them paid off, um, as well as grocery, uh, but when you get down to some of these bills down here, like mortgage and rent, you can set a due date of saying, hey, that's due on this date. And I want to repeat that every month. I want to set that due date. Click that button. And see now on your budget, it'll say due May 1st. So now that you have what you're planning on budgeting for each, you have all of your expenses land out, you have all of your plans. So now you need to figure out how much money do you need to make this budget work. So what's cool is if you just put in a thousand dollars, it'll show you what you actually need to put in there. So if you've been following the saving secret, what I encourage people to do is put their money first into savings. I've, if you haven't seen one of these videos, I've done several videos on how to put your money first into savings before you put it in a checking account. So once you've built your expenses off that, your bill, now you know how much you need to deposit. So if you look over here, I said a thousand and I'm four thousand over. So I need to deposit forty forty two ninety seven. So we'll do that forty. 42.97 and what it'll say it's an every dollar budget so by going through your expenses first categorizing them and using them it really makes it easy to know that hey this is what your budget is going to cost you this month and you need to deposit $4,427 in at the beginning of the month. And if you deposit that into your checking and all of your accounts are, that's where the bills are automatically withdrawn. Maybe you have some of these set up as auto pay, which would be great. That means if you deposited all of this money at the beginning of the month, you would have all of your bills paid and you would not need to worry about anything. And if you held to your budget, which is really great. You can add a new thing that happened to say, hey, I went to the grocery sp store, I spent $60.59. Um, I went to Walmart, but it was actually, let's say it was in the future. It was 5 to 2020, and it was in the grocery. So you just hit this and you'd hit track expense. So now it gives you a running total of what you have left for your grocery budget. So that's how this really works and it's very simple to use. One of the things that I do is since I know that I have these bills with specific due dates and I have them set up for auto pay, 
what I'll actually do is I'll actually close out all of these bills because I know that I'm already going to pay those. And so what I would do, for example, is for this, I'd write $2,000. Uh, I call it mortgage. I could spell mortgage. And it would be under mortgage. And then I would collect that, but I could edit it. And you notice I did that on purpose. I actually sent the wrong date for that. So if you went here, it said, oh, I spent $2,000 to the ones here. Oh, it was on April. Let's actually edit that date because it wasn't actually on 422. It was actually on 51. And you can update that expense. So at the beginning of the month, I actually like to go through... Um, all of my budgeted items that I already know that I'm going to have prepaid and go through them. And then really you're just left with your gas and some of your lifestyle funds and your groceries that you're all you're really tracking because these ones have already been spent and that's how I look at it. So that's how I, that's how I manage um, my budget. So at this point I show you how to, build a budget very simply by using this tool. I think it's a wonderful tool. Now, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning is there are some people who still like to use credit cards to pay most of their bills. And so how can you use this platform to show that you have a credit card? So one of the small tweaks that you can make to this is let's say you want to pay your lifestyle funds with a credit card because you can get reward points for those gas you pay mo all of these bills your utilities internet you can pay for all of those with a credit card and you can still get those reward points and you have the cash so you know Dave Ramsey specifically says never to use a credit card it's of the devil all of those things and I went without a credit card for over three years and it was great uh, however there is you are missing out on extra points and cash back that you could be receiving so one of the things is if you do have a credit card how does this budget work so instead of having to deposit all of your money here what I would do is I call this checking checking on the first and I call this the credit card on the 28th and you'll see what I mean by this it could be a little bit confusing so what I do is I mark everything that I pay out of my checking account with an asterisk symbol. So this is pretty cool. So everything that you're going to pay with an asterisk symbol, we're going to put a, a little, everything you pay out of your checking account, you put an asterisk symbol. So you're going to go through it and say, I'm going to use a credit card for those. I'm going to use a credit card for all of these. I'm going to use a credit card for that. Ooh, church. I'm going to pay that out of my um, checking account. This one, I'm going to pay out of my checking account and the rest everything else I'm going to pay with my credit card so then I'll look at all the things that I marked with an asterisk and there's really only two things so if we look at it it was two thousand and three hundred I believe yeah two twenty three hundred bucks so what this is saying is on the first of the month you need to have twenty three hundred dollars in your checking account but now I'm 100, I'm 17, 42, and 97 over budget. So I'm going to spend 17, 42.97 on my credit card. And what that means is I'm going to use my credit card throughout the month of May, right? And then on the 28th, I am going to pay off every bill that I've paid throughout the whole month. So at the beginning of the month, let's assume your credit card balance was at zero. 
Yeah. And then throughout the month, you're going to start paying all of these different bills. And at the end of the month, at the 28th of the month, you're going to pay that bill off. And this is what your total budget is for the month. So it's a way to get, you know, you're paying $1,700 already, but now you're getting the benefits of what credit card you're using. Again, for me, I don't use the points for flying or travel. I just use them as a, a statement credit every month. I get about $100 off my credit card bill every year. So I'm actually able to save about 100 bucks on this little bill. Nothing crazy, but it, it, every little bit adds up. And so it's kind of nice. So that is how I budget with the every dollar system. So that's really great. Well, another thing that's really great about this software and what's great about this program is you can go here and say, okay, I want to plan out June. All right, let's start planning for June. And June is completely different than, um, than May, right? So, but we, we start off and they give us, this is what our starting wages are. And so, yeah, these are the same, but hey, there's no Mother's Day in, in May. There's actually Father's Day. And so we could plan out Father's Day. And then, you know, you still have lots of these bills. Utilities, it'll be something different. What's cool about planning out your utilities is you do get a bill at the end of the previous month. So at the end of April, you'll know what May's is. At the end of May, you'll know what June's bill needs to be. But you can leave that in for the time being until you know exactly what it is, and then you can edit that number. These other ones are right. So I have car insurance. My car insurance that's due. And so you can figure out what that is. I don't know exactly what it is as I get closer. I can punch in what that is. That's my six month premium for my car insurance. I could update that due date of when that is due. Um, it is not a repeat every month. So let's set that due date. And then you have your basic working and then you'd say, oh, is this one, can I pay with credit card or can I pay with cash? I can pay this with a credit card. So I will pay that with a credit card. Again, this one, I need to pay 2,300 bucks with that. And then the rest I can pay with this. So then, then what I would do is I would zero this out and it'll tell me how much I need to pay on my credit card. So here I need to spend nineteen nineteen seventy five point eighty five and you've already done two budgets for two months and so the next month gets easier and easier and again you don't even really need to do this on the computer you can do it from your app and again, like I was saying before, you need, if we're looking at last month's, so let's assume you didn't have any credit card debt and you didn't have any credit card at this time and you're saying, oh, I need to have 2,300 bucks in at the beginning of the month and I'm going to use my credit card, but that bill, that one bill will be due on the 28th. So you need to pay that off on the 28th. So what I do is I transfer all of my money at the end of the month. So let's assume you didn't, you started from scratch, you didn't have a credit card, you paid off all your stuff. So on May 1st, you need to make sure you have $2,300 in your checking account. Now, when you get to the 28th of the month, you need to transfer this number Let's look at it. You need to transfer 1742.97 or what your credit card bill was. So you need to transfer that. Plus, if we go to June's and you look at what the first was, you need to donate, you need to transfer another 23 hundred dollars and then you need to transfer that at the 28th and then you would have all that money taken care of again you do the same principle for the end of june in preparation for july and so that's how you figure out how much money you need to transfer into your 
checking account for that given month. So again, lots of information. I'm a big fan of the every dollar um, system. I've been using the app, like I've said at the beginning of this video, for over three years. My first every dollar budget app was month that we started was December of 2016. So not new to this. I've used it for years. I think it's a great tool. I think you can use uh, credit cards to, to pay off uh, regular scheduled bills and they can help you manage it. I'm a big fan of this. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in some of my other videos that I've done in the past, feel free to, to check those out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.